The ground trembles, buildings collapse, people scream and flee the streets. Chaos takes over for almost 90 years, monster movies have brought action, adventure, and spectacle to our eyes. Like Alien vs. Predator or Freddy vs. Jason, these epic fights make us wonder which titan will possibly win and how. With the new release of Godzilla vs. Kong, we want to travel back to their beginnings and find out how these two beasts landed on a screen together in 1962's King Kong vs. Godzilla to make movie magic worth repeating. Bell bottoms are back, baby, and so are these two. Let's dive in! The eighth wonder of the world, King Kong, was the brainchild of American filmmaker Marion C. Cooper. When he was just a kid, he got an adventure book about Africa and its wildlife from his uncle. The book contained a particular story about a mega-sized gorilla that was described as the king of the African forests. This story planted a seed in Marion's brain that took 30 years to grow and become the first film in the MonsterVerse, 1933's King Kong. This movie was meant to strike fear and terror into the audience, a nightmare brought to life. It was a huge success and launched a series of follow-up movies, comics, and pop culture references for decades. 20 years later, in 1954 Japan, the King of Monsters was created as a prehistoric sea beast born from nuclear radiation, set to destroy the country. Post-war Japan was an uneasy place, and the creation of Godzilla's origin story had a sympathetic dimension to its viewers. You take this monster talk seriously? Although Godzilla's specific origins have varied slightly over the years, his overall appearance as a giant reptile monster similar to a dinosaur has remained the same. With 36 films that followed, Godzilla is the king of sequels and has been pitted against some crazy mythical monsters. He has been a staple in film, TV, video games, and comics for over 60 years. I have seen a lot of movies. So how did these two megastars get thrown together in the first place? It was all a publicity stunt! For both the actual filmmakers and the story itself, the creators were looking to make a wildly popular comeback story for the ages. It had been 30 years since Kong had been on the scene, and although the filmmakers originally were thinking of having Kong fight a Frankenstein-type monster, the financial interest of a Japanese studio sealed the fate of Kong's next matchup with its new terrifying star, Godzilla. In the film itself, Japanese TV producers were looking for the next big ratings boost when they're told about a creature living on a faraway island. A perfect idea of exploitation was formed. Little did they know they were about to unleash Kong back into the world. The men sent to trap Kong observe him killing an oversized octopus and then nap after a swig of native berry juice. They see their chance to grab him and do so. At the same time, an American nuclear submarine hits an iceberg and inadvertently sets a hibernating Godzilla free, where he'd been trapped since 1955. Godzilla makes it to Japan first and begins terrorizing the country. Once Kong wakes up from his slumber, he fights his way off the boat he's on and lands himself in Japan as well. The first confrontation between Kong and Godzilla finds both monsters using their great strengths. Kong throws massive rocks at Godzilla, and Godzilla answers back with his atomic heat ray. Once burned, twice shy, Kong retreats to lick his wounds. With as much human interference, dangerous instigating, and prop work these two monsters deal with, they might as well be WWE wrestlers. Let's get sweaty and wrestle! Japanese military forces work to electrocute Godzilla. Not that it worked well before, but this time they eventually subdue the beast and have him cornered. Meanwhile, Kong is raging and feeding off electricity like Popeye and his spinach, making him stronger and stronger. The military had enough and created a gas out of Kong's berry juice to knock the brood out. With the hopes of killing both monsters at the same time, the military pits them against each other on top of Mount Fuji. Godzilla's powerful atomic ray and killer dropkick moves almost take Kong out, 
But when all seems lost for Kong, a powerful bolt of lightning bursts from the sky to recharge Kong like he's the DeLorean and back to the future's clock tower scene. The battle continues until both monsters topple off the mountain and into the sea, where the battle eventually ends with Kong's reappearance. Godzilla is nowhere to be found, but like any good soap opera will tell you, this doesn't mean he's dead. This movie launched a seemingly endless amount of monster versus monster movies that have created the legacy of the monsterverse. Although both creatures have gone on to other projects over the years, they have not reappeared together until now, which is what makes this latest remake one for the ages. What do you think about the Kong vs. Godzilla timeline? Let us know in the comments section below! Check out this video here and be sure to like and subscribe to never miss another video here on Cinemash!